Well, from Barry's welcome, really what we're turning to now is a message from the future. Uh, because this event is attended, as we know, by the current generation of coastal managers and decision makers who represent today's custodians of the nation's coastal zone. But there'll come a time, however, when that role will be handed on to future generations. And joining us on behalf of those future generations, we're now joined by representatives of the IC Eye Care Ambassador Program, which is a social marketing tool developed by the Dolphin Research Institute. The program is aimed at building a strong sense of stewardship of the southern coasts and waterways among school-aged children. The ICI Care Program is supported by organisations including Melbourne Water, Six Coastal Councils, Catholic Education, the business community and more than 100 schools. Previous ICI Care Ambassadors have now graduated and many of them are preparing to become the next generation of environmental managers. So this morning we have three of the current ambassadors. Uh, we have Charlotte Swain, um, who's attending with, with her mum, Julia. Amy Stone, who's here with her mum, Andrea. Um, Tiana Atkinson, with her mum, Amanda. And also Mandy Robertson, um, who's the Education Director of the Dolphin Research Institute. Please welcome the IC Eye Care Ambassador. Hello, I'm Tiana Atkinson. I am an IC Eye Care Ambassador with the Dolphin Research Institute. And on behalf of Victoria's Marine Treasures, welcome. Over 90% of our marine life are found nowhere else on the planet. Let's meet some of our treasures, all from within 50 kilometres of where we are today. Meet Victoria's marine emblem, the weedy sea dragon. They are related to seahorses but are as unique in the water as a kid in his own land. The blue devilfish grows up to about 30 centimetres and lives in caves where males protect their eggs. Burko's nudibranch is one of the world's most spectacular sea slugs. The colours on this calamari squid are warning the photographer to stay away. Amazing colonies of zooanthids cover the walls of Port Phillip Head's Marine National Park. This is a close-up of a brilliant Gorgonian sea fan, again in Port Phillip Head. Many thousands of spider crabs into Port Phillip around Easter to Mole. There is definitely safety in numbers. Our region has a remarkable diversity of birds, like this oyster catcher with chick. Western Port is home to about 1% of the world's population for six bird species. We have the world's largest colony of Australasian fur seals at Seal Rocks near Phillip Island. We are visited by blue whales that come to feed in the rich waters off our western coast during summer. They are the largest animal to ever live. Our kelp forests are home to some of the world's fastest growing organisms. Port Phillip has the world's smallest sea star. Port Phillip is home to a resident community of bottlenose dolphins. And we have a remarkable community of common dolphins that came into Port Phillip in about 2006 and stayed. And why wouldn't you? Everywhere else in the world, this species lives in the open ocean. Hello, I am Amy Stone. I am also an ICI Care Ambassador and welcome you all on behalf of nearly 3,000 past and present ambassadors. We work to develop a strong sense of marine and coastal self-esteem with our community. The Dolphin Research Institute runs ICI Care Challenge programs to the community during the summer. Our ambassadors are motivated through experiences on vessels in Port Phillip and Western Port. Many ambassadors snorkel with seals and sea dragons. We learn how stormwater pollution traps protect our coast. They collect rubbish from where we all live before it reaches the sea. We give back by working with rangers to plant and weed coastal environments. We also learn from the traditional owners about native vegetation and how their ancestors lived on the coast. We are trained as peer educators and run marine treasure lessons to our junior grades. We speak at assemblies to share our experiences from workshops. Some ambassadors do more, such as speaking at Rotary Clubs and Community Radio, 
or volunteering in other programs. The green stars show the coverage of our C IC Eye Care program. This year we will involve over 400 ambassadors from 100 schools. IC Eye Care received a Victorian Coastal Award of Excellence in 2013. Hello, I'm Charlotte Swain. I'm also an IC Eye Care Ambassador. Welcome. On behalf of future generations, we must rely on us all to be successful ambassadors and stewards for Australia's marine environment. We all love the coast and want to live and work near it. The photo shows the suburbs of East of Port Phillip. In Hastings, on West of Port, natural environments, suburbia, boating, a port and heavy industry must all coexist. Mornington Harbour has picture postcard beauty on a calm day that attracts large numbers of people for a variety of uses. The ruggedness of a rough day has its own beauty, but also presents issues for coastal managers. You can see the major reconstruction of the pier. Heavy weather coinciding with high tides puts buildings at risk. Even the most severe conditions won't stop some of us enjoying the coast. Major storm events provide a graphic reminder of the connection between the catchment and the coast, as this February 2011 feature in the age shows. Many of our drains now have litter traps to capture the gross pollution. They only work with medium rain flows. Suspended and dissolved materials flow straight through. In major storms, everything overflows. Much of it lands on our beaches. Our challenge is that 60% of the community <coughs> think this rubbish all comes from beach visitors. They don't connect where they live and their impacts on the coastal environment. Perhaps nothing better symbolises the tension between the natural values of our region and our use of the coast than these whales visiting Hastings Harbour with the petrochemical plant in the background. It is reinforced further when you consider that Hastings is in the middle of the Western Port Ramsar site and the Western Port UNESCO biosphere. The coastal and marine values in this region are remarkable. This map shows that we have 13 marine, national parks and sanctuaries within 90 minutes drive of 4.5 million Melbournians. We can't find another major city which has that. In closing, I want to go back to my first words where I welcomed you on behalf of future generations. On behalf of myself and my fellow ambassadors, Tiana and Amy, I want to thank the Sea Change Task Force for the opportunity to speak and to you all for caring about our wonderful coast. Thank you. Isn't that terrific to hear from you know, school children of that age? Um, because it's reassuring to know that um, the values that they place on the coast now and on the marine environment really will last with them all of their lives. There have been 3,000 of these children who've been through this program and they're out in the community at the moment. Many of them have continued their association and their interest in the marine environment and are going on to do relevant um, uh, university degrees in, in those areas. So on your behalf, could I thank Charlotte, Amy and, um, and Tiana. Thank you for joining us this morning. <laughs>